today's PMOs are facing challenges on multiple fronts. In this modern competitive age, we move to digital uh, digitalization uh, as we do digital transformation and other business transformations that uh, result from that. Uh, PMOs are having to adjust and move with that and move with it effectively to help us achieve more value in our organizations. Digital business leaders face these top challenges, which uh, are directly uh, uh, aligned with uh, the role of the PMO, uh, helping orchestrate enterprise change. As these modern changes come by, they impact all parts of the organization, and we all have to be pulling in the same direction. We get a lot more demand for doing things that maybe we have never done before and being able to prioritize and execute on these cross-functional investments that go across participation across all different functional areas of our company is um, more complex to coordinate. And also speed to deliver value. In this modern age, the pressure is there, the market pressures, the competitive pressures to deliver faster than ever before, and not just deliver for the sake of delivering, but deliver things that, um, that actually bring genuine, genuine value to the table. Now, because of all this wide-ranging, cross-functional, and organization-wide type of changes that have to happen, many organizations, and there is a trend to move from the more departmental PMOs to EPMOs. Uh, not that all are doing that, but because of the breadth and the, the width of the things that go across the organization and the depth, um, um, this seems to be a move that's meeting the needs. The Gardner Group just did a study not too long ago and indicated that already 49% of organizations have an EPMO function uh, in their organizations, and that number is anticipated to grow. Why the shift? Well, it's really to address threats and opportunities. And because digital business leaders are constantly faced with a continuous flux of threats and opportunities with significant business implementations, whether they're digital or not. And responding to these threats and opportunities that have organization-wide impact correspondingly have a significant amount of effort and cost associated with them that we have to invest in and basically manage and get value from. It then requires orchestration and governance at scale, not just departmentally, but across the entire organization, both of which are provided by an effective enterprise um, project or program management organization. Now, core EPMO functions, as, such as the execution of large enterprise-wide initiatives and quick, effective portfolio prioritization to, to choose what we want, are two of the most coveted capabilities, as we said earlier on in the prior slide, for digital business success, and the EPMO helps us achieve that vision. And also, it helps us establish better and the right relationships uh, within our organizations and a core focus on, on achieving the key business objectives of the overall company the outcomes that we're seeking, and positioning in the appropriate place in the enterprise, the EPMO with the right connections and the right relationships can significantly improve the enterprise's ability to do the things that we're talking about and deliver the value that's sought. So to do that, you know, it's more than just what we've done in the past years. Um, you know, having visibility to all our projects and programs and looking at status and being able to manage and provide governance around all that is great but we really need to move to where we're all aligning well with strategy. That strategy uh, really is the, let's just say the North Star of where we wanna go with the organization, where our leadership wants to take us, where their vision is. And then what we execute on needs to be aligned with that. Otherwise, why are we doing it? If it's not helping us get to our overall strategy and where we wanna go with the organization, we have to question, why is it, why are we even, even consider, uh, considering doing that? And if we align with strategy well, and then we execute well on the things that we choose to do that align with that, we should achieve success and deliver value. So the Gardner Group looks at it as a set of processes involving the people, the strategy itself, and the operations that support it, and also as an overall system of strategy development by your leadership, then planning around that, and then organizational alignment on how to get there and having operational plans and other types of plans to get there and then monitor and learn from that and adapt as we go forward by executing these strategies and getting better and better at it as we go over time. And this is Gartner's uh, uh, view of the world. So strategic portfolio management is 
if we define that as a set of business capabilities and processes and people around that, there are more dimensions to it than just our projects and our portfolios and our resources, for example. If we look over at the different elements or objects that we see over on the right-hand side, we have objectives or strategies, we have tangible key results. We then have things like projects traditionally. We have epics, which might indicate more agile efforts. We might have features and detailed things within uh, those uh, agile or software development efforts or product development efforts. And we might be uh, having value streams and continuous delivery of products, et cetera, and delivering business capabilities along the way. And these things need to be aligned if we're gonna achieve the objectives because they all contribute, are associated, or have to at least be factored in in order to achieve success. So leadership requires strategic portfolio management to support this enterprise-wide strategy to execution alignment and be able to adapt to it. And defining of these key business strategies and business outcomes has to factor in more than just the projects and the resources and such. There are business capabilities that may have to be addressed or modernized, for example. Um, there might be digital and physical products that we need to um, uh, address, modernize, modify. The applications in our systems internally might have to be addressed or factored in. Can they support where we want to go or do they need to be redone or do they need to be uh, modernized? And the projects themselves that have to be aligned. So once again, multidimensional, more things being factored in uh, than we may have factored in in the past. And then we have to define and prioritize the strategies, manage the execution of the initiatives that align that align and drive the achievement of those strategies, and then have full, full visibility and consideration of the core functional assets that need to be involved. And so we have the leadership who sets that direction overall. We have IT or functional management who owns the assets and the infrastructure within the organization, and then the execution teams that actually have to deliver on this stuff, who actually have to uh, create and, 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 and execute on the projects, et cetera. So the importance here is really about the fact that we are in the midst of ever increasing complexity in business environments. And as we do that, change happens often, we have to manage risk, we have to optimize the portfolios and we have to align them. And this is a continuous effort. It's not something that we just do as an annual exercise. There's a greater need for financial and resource optimization because we only have so many resources. We, most of us have resource constraints and, con and uh, it's a constraint that we have to deal with. And we have to make sure that we're prioritizing the right things and then allocating the resources that we have to maximize the value that we're delivering. And then we have a demand for data-driven decision-making. If things are changing, we wanna know if we're making the right choices, we need to have data at our fingertips and have data that has a lot of different dimensions to it and provide insight and not only into the performance of the portfolio, but also making informed decisions on what it is we're gonna work on, what we're gonna select next, what those strategic goals might be or what they need to be as they change. And then the adoption of Agile and other project management methodologies means that there's a variety of ways that people are doing work. It's not just a one-size-fits-all proposition. And to get that all folded into a central, effective portfolio management capability and process, you need a system that will allow you to get there. And project portfolios aligning with strategic goals is something that needs to be visible. And then emerging technologies and business, and business models. With this digital transformation age that we're in, the way we do business in the past is probably not the way we're gonna do business and reach our customers and interact with our customers in the future. And part of this is that we have to get more effective internally with our operations. We also might have new business models in the way we address, uh, get awareness, uh, interact, sell our products or services to our customers. And we have to emerge these, and these may be changing over time. Not only if we are innovative and are the leader in, in a certain idea and a way to do that, but maybe even just to keep up with our competition and where the market's going so that we don't get left behind. So add to that the recent rise of AI and the rapid adoption and evolution of that. Uh, since ChatGPT was made public in November 2022, that's all, not all that long ago, it has reached well over 180 million users. It is by far um, the quickest time to reach a million users of any technology in recent in recent memory or in recent recent times or anything that we can uh, fathom. And if you look at that, we then have to say, it's here, it's real, what are we gonna do about it? Now, many organizations are coming to that realization. And um, in 2023, organizations, 45% uh, of organizations have increased their investment 
in AI and AI technology and what they're going to do with that. Another 46 have had no change at this point, but I think you're going to rapidly see that change in the coming months. Now, it's a hot new technology with excitement, but also with apprehension, right, on how we're going to deal with that, how we're going to govern it. It's got ease of use for personal use and experimentation, so our employees are definitely, you know, fiddling with it, and they're using it in a variety of different ways because it's readily available. It has massive market implications. How are we going to turn this into business advantage? How are we going to turn this into a business opportunity? We all have to be thinking of that in that regard uh, in our industries. And it offers significant potential opportunities there, but it also entails disruption and risk. And we have to manage that. We have to factor in what that's going to mean to us. So the current challenges we have as strategic portfolio leaders and PMOs is we got to cut through the generative AI hype, okay, that, that we have there. There's a, there's a lot of hype, but there's a lot of meat to it too. And we must identify its business and functional implications fast. We don't want to be caught napping. We want to be able to adjust and, and take advantage of it in a way that makes sense for our business and not be left behind by our competitor. It's not a matter of if. Gen AI will impact your strategic portfolio management lifecycle in, in a lot of different ways. So I think we have to prepare now for key inbound Gen AI impacts to ensure strategic planning and execution and leveraging and maximizing its impact and benefits in the way we do business in our uh, PMO operations. So the key is it's not to necessarily change the fundamentals of what we do with strategic portfolio management, but incorporate Gen AI uh, into uh, those practices. For example, you know, adapting to portfolio market changes. Not only will AI help us in the analysis of that, but to be quite frank, we may get intake ideas and business proposals and business cases for different approaches to generate to use generative AI and use AI um, as projects that we want to pursue. And we have to sort through that and we have to determine what are the right things for us to work on. How what's best ways for our organization to leverage these things and what initiatives should we embark upon in order to take advantage of that. Building next generation talent. This is new. We have to make sure that our people and our PMOs and that are working in strategic portfolio management uh, learn how to work with and maximize the benefit of these technologies so that we can achieve the benefit and, uh, and, and get the gains that are promised and, 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 and stay ahead of the game. And then we have to embrace these disruptive technologies, meaning we can't just put our head in the sand and say, uh, well, you know, we're not ready for this. Um, it's, it's, all, it's all too new. Uh, we need to embrace it, but we need to figure out the ways that we can incorporate it maximize it, leverage it, and take full advantage uh, uh, of the potential that's there with uh, AI capability. So when we, think we talk about AI and portfolio management, some of the things that we can look at in areas that it can help us today is augmented data entry, you know, create relevant information and details, narrative, the types of things that we want. It can definitely reduce the time and effort required to, to do that manual entry. Automated information retrieval, you know, analyze the data, right? Uh, be able to give us information and suggestions. Uh, be able to reduce the time and effort required for analysis and synthesis of complex data models. Uh, communication automation, automate communication uh, narrative and text to stakeholders, reducing the need for manual communication and building that from scratch. Yeah, resource estimation. Estimate the resources required for a project based upon historical knowledge and reducing the risk for over and under staffing. You know, optimize that process. And then identify underperforming investments. You know, scrutinize project related information, how things are performing, and give us some suggestions on what we should address, what requires our attention, whether we should, you know, uh, put further funding against those or should we terminate it, put something on hold. Forecast on completion, uh, forecast completion and spending. Identify recurring patterns and trends and figure out ways that we can get better at that. Budget and plan optimization. A analyzing your project data, identify areas where that you can, your budget can be optimized. And then uh, uh, figure out where that resource allocation or process improvement can help achieve that. And complement your decision making. Um, you know, I, the best case for generative AI is to complement uh, our human intellect and our human efforts and our own insights but also be able to bring things to the table that we might not fully be able to comprehend with our own human intellect. 
uh, and with the, which the AI possibly can. And then risk identification, be able to identify potential risks before we might see them or notice them and mitigate them before they, while, we, while we still have an opportunity to have some effect on that. Uh, defect reduction by scrutinizing project data to pinpoint areas where defects are most likely to transpire and keep, get our antennas up. And then data anomalies, understand where things don't make sense, right? Where outliers are, that it, it, do they indicate errors or do they indicate something that's a, that's a problem that we need to address? So just some areas or suggestions that a PMO can look at, look at in portfolio management. Now, you know, we represent one plan solutions and one plan does provide a path to strategic portfolio management and a complete solution for the enterprise. It does give us those strategic planning capabilities for the business leaders, the ability to develop OKRs, objectives and key results, be able to identify the value streams or the key streams of value that we're going to be delivering as an organization, both internally and externally. The execution leaders, now that's our PMOs and the project managers and the scrum masters and the product owners that we have out there that are going to execute on the things that are going to help deliver on that strategy. Uh, we have tools in there to help, whether you be a more adaptive approach with multi-methodologies and multi-tools, whether you're a professional services organization, whether it's an agile approach across the board, or even product development. And then the functional leaders, the ones we talked about that own the core assets, you know, be able to identify enterprise architecture elements, uh, application portfolio elements, product portfolio elements, and factor those in and align them with the other two, with the strategies and with the execution elements that we have in our solution. As we evolve, not everybody's going to be fully matured into a full strategic portfolio or SPM type of process. One plan gives the opportunity to meet where you're at in a crawl, walk, run approach. Leverage the things that you can today and have a solution with the capability that will allow you to grow into the other elements of a full SPM methodology and solution and system and process at a time when you're ready. And you can set your uh, roadmap to, to help achieve that if, if that's where you want to go. Just to give you a quick idea of the types of capabilities that one plan provides in the mix is an overall strategic plan on the upfront part, because you got to have a strategy. And then hopefully the intake, the ideas and the requests that come in are ones that align with and help support the achievement of those strategies. And then there's the enterprise architecture elements that we talked about, whether they be applications, business capabilities, whether they be products or, or value streams. The idea is to have those identified and understand and factor those in where they are required in order to succeed on the projects and or the strategies themselves. And a full selection process whereby we can choose from the myriad of ideas and requests that come in, what initiatives, projects, uh, efforts that we're going to invest in and tackle. Full portfolio planning, whether it be traditional list views or more agile approaches with portfolio boards, with uh, roadmaps, uh, et cetera, be able to view those things. Be able to have full resource capacity planning. So as we assess what it is we're gonna do and what it's gonna take, we can look and see what do we have the capacity to tackle? Um, what can we do with the resources that we have or identify where we would need additional resources to achieve the things we want to do. And the same thing holds true with finances, be able to have detailed financial planning and tracking and understand our constraints there in our selection of what we want to tackle. And a full what if scenario modeling capability to look at alternatives, to be able to evaluate and assess viable alternatives uh, before we actually implement them without impacting the current production data in our portfolios. Now the execution side of that, you know, we have to execute on anything we select to do. And whether it be more waterfall work plans, more agile work plans with backlogs and sprints, one plan has those capabilities built right into the solution, but we have a connector technology that's inherent to one plan that allows us to connect to popular work management tools or scheduling tools that you might be using today. You know, Microsoft Projects, Smartsheet, you know, Project for the Web, Azure DevOps, Jira, et cetera. The idea is if you have things in place, we can fold that in and roll it into this central portfolio for you. And even track things like issues, risks, change requests, et cetera. And then the resource planning on an individual project by project basis that rolls into that capacity plan, those are all inherent in the solution, as well as that team members that have to participate in your projects. You can get status from them real time as they enter it directly into the system across all the things that they're working on. They don't have to go to different tools or spreadsheets to do that. And if you need to record time, 
you know, whether it be for capitalization of labor, whether it be for chargebacks internally, whether it be for billing the clients, that is just a native part of the system that allows you to do that without having to do something externally with a third party system. And all the reporting, you know, onboard status reporting, dashboards at all levels, you know, the portfolio, the programs, the projects, the resources, et cetera. And then visualization is really powerful. When I talk about all those interrelated things in that enterprise architecture and our strategic alignment and our projects, how do those things interrelate with one another and how do they uh, impact one another is something that you want to see visually. Ultimately, this helps us deliver what we need to deliver uh, at the end of the day and deliver value. The artificial intelligence part that we were talking about, one plan has uh, developed its own AI assistant, Sophia GPT, and we'll talk about that. And it's available to us all the time within one plan in all aspects of the product. So ultimately, we want to provide you with tools that help you select the right work to do, right? And then to execute well and do the work right. Now, today we're talking about the PMO and the project management office of the EPMO definitely is a primary place to get value from what we're talking about here today. But in an enterprise PMO, you're going to touch all these other different parts of the organization. So whether you're managing these things departmentally today, there's tools in here and these concepts do apply to you uh, um, if you're looking to get better and improve uh, in these dimensions and delivering the projects and working on the right things. So Sophia GPT is the AI assistant in one plan, and it is a purpose built for strategic portfolio management AI assistant that will help us with all the different areas that we talked about as far as the potential areas that AI can help us with in, in, in portfolio management and in our PMOs. Now it's always available in one plan. So if you're in one plan and you want to ask Sophia a question, give Sophia a prompt in an area, it will not only look at the vast amounts of data that has, it has learned, in its Azure OpenAI, and we're built in the Microsoft cloud of Azure OpenAI with all the security and permissions and compliance that's built around that. But it will also analyze the data that you have available to you in one plan to apply its knowledge against the data sets that you've put in here, giving you uh, uh, purpose-built, relevant AI capabilities for the PPM or SPM uh, uh, purpose that you have. So right now, if you look at where it says now in the, on the fourth box there, we now have generative AI, inbuilt AI assistance, but be assured that this promise of future autonomous-based AI that'll do things automatically for you, uh, we're already in development and planning for those things, that it's going to be, that future is gonna be here sooner rather than later, and one plan is gonna be the platform that's gonna deliver that for you. So some sample use cases in one plan that people use today. Strategic planning, is where AI can be applied, portfolio optimization in one plan, work management, helping build plans and resource plans, assessing risk, uh, helping with resource allocation, and even looking at financials and investment forecasting. Those are some areas that are there today, and we're constantly adding to the use cases that one plan can support you with with Sophia GPT.